Greetings from Sunapee, New Hampshire. I want to introduce you to the next collection of items we're going to be selling here coming up in our Labor Day auction. It's going to be post Labor Day. That'll be September 12th. The collection today is coming from this home in Sunapee, New Hampshire, uh, the Mark and Diane's collection. They've been here for about 25 years. Mark and Diane designed and built this property. Um, it's one of the most magnificent properties in the state of New Hampshire. We've been in a million different houses over the years. This ranks up with the top five houses I've ever been in. So we hope you enjoy a video tutorial of this art collection that will be coming to auction on September 12th. I have my two trusted employees here, Leon Rogers, auctioneer and appraiser, and Walter Jane's master packer. <laughs> so we're going to get started. We're going to uh, walk you through and uh, show you some of the works that will be coming up in September 12th. Thank you. By the way, Will, my son, is doing the videoing today. We're at the front entry of uh, Mark and Diane's home, and here's one of their prized possessions here, and Mark and Diane are going to allow us to sell this at auction. 1948 Woody Wagon, Oldsmobile. Hydromatic? Hydromatic. Hydromatic. The first year they did automatic transmissions known as the Hydromatic right here. This is the known as the Beach Wagon. And I'd like Mark to discuss a little bit more about this, seeing he's owned it for 20 years. So we bought the uh, Woody Wagon in 1999 from a gentleman named George Coleman, Green Valentine Motors, Inc. He was the leading restorer and seller of Woody Wagons at the time. Birthday gift to my wife. She insisted to have automatic transmission. Uh, the reason they're called beach wagons is they were the primary markets for them in the United States were in Long Island and the North Shore or Cape Ann, Massachusetts, and they were used as beach wagons. So they were really the original SUV. The beauty of the car is really the reason that they stopped being produced because they had to be made basically by hand and as mass production really started to come of, come of its own in the 50s they couldn't afford to be making handmade cars you look at some of the detail and you look at how the you know you talk about tailgating you don't see a tailgate that looks like this doesn't look like your SUVs of today. It's a little bit more beautiful. And if you take a shot of the inside, it looks like a boat yeah. or a canoe. You can see how these things were constructed. Um, yeah. was all handmade. You have to be old enough to have remembered cars from the 50s to know this, or you would never be able to start this automobile. Because there is, it's not a trick. It's just, this is the way they used to make cars. So you start the car in neutral, number one. When you put the key in, not only do you step on the gas, but there's a button right here next to the key thing that if you don't push, the car won't start. And this is the Luigi Lucioni. It's titled Still Life, Dahlias and Apples. This particular painting was purchased by the Metropolitan Museum in 1932. Lucioni was one of the, was the, actually the youngest American artist to be exhibited at the Met. Soon after that is when Lucioni became more sought after and more famous for his works of art. And that's sort of when he went to the Manchester Dorset area and started painting your quintessential Vermont scenes. Here's a beautiful uh, rendition of a spread winged eagle, carved wood and mustard painted right there. A nice folk art eagle in the Schimmel style almost. Here's one of the items we're going to be selling also on the sales this great Venetian globe right here. This is after Blau. It's actually signed, I believe, Will, if you look here, Julius Blau. He was a Venetian uh, globe maker. This has been professionally restored, but an incredible size. Well, above the fireplace, what else would you expect in a home like this? 
and Eric Sloan. This is titled The Milk House. Sloan, uh, known for his rural scenes, did a lot of still lifes and these autumn scenes with barns. But I really want to show you this one up here on the wall. This is a spectacular Wimby Hoyt right there, Vermont scene. Wimby Hoyt, it's actually William B. Hoyt, but because he signs it W.M.B. Hoyt, it's pronounced Wimby Hoyt. So a beautiful painting, large size, most likely a Vermont scene, cows in winter. Not only did they collect paintings, they collected sculpture. Here we got a great bronze uh, sculpture by Joe Beeler, an Arizona artist, contemporary. Uh, as you can see, it is cold painted, okay, with decoration. And it's titled The Whiskey Guard right there of a Native American figure. Okay, well, here's, we're in the study here, beautiful study. Here's one of my favorite paintings in the Mark and Diane's collection, another Luigi Luisioni. Again, most likely painted in the Manchester Dorset area. He was known for doing birch trees and red barns. And here you can see his red barn right here. It's a 20 by 30 oil on canvas. A great example of Luisioni's work. These landscapes are highly coveted. Wonderful painting. In here, in the dining room, well, we have another lovely painting, John Francis Murphy. Wonderful, luminous landscape right there. This is a really a fine example by this artist. Very well-respected artist, New York painter. Um, you can see the tonalism up here. Really nice, nice quality painting. It is signed. Here we are on the second floor, Will, on a, a really striking large canvas 19th century Hudson River School showing figures and boats on the river. A little village off there in the background. Beautiful, uh, beautiful painting of the Hudson River. Very well done. Mid 19th century. Almost in the style of Thomas Cole, well known New York Hudson River painting. Notice the detail in the village here, very well painted. Cole was known for doing these type of figures, but a big, big canvas. Here we have a oil on canvas by Margaret Pearson, a Boston painter. Well known for doing these elegant women in interior scenes. Here she is, I believe, knitting, sewing. It is signed in the lower right. Margaret Pearson, nice painting. This is exactly what Carlson's known for, the sort of the light and shadows. I asked Mark, uh, he purchased this many years ago at a Christie's sale, never has been cleaned, and I think that would, would, would increase the, the color effect in this if you were to get it, to get it clean, but a, a nice example of a John F. Carlson. Lake Sunapee out there, and you can see a really good picture of the ski mountain there, Sunapee Ski Mountain. This house has 16,000 square feet of living space. Here's another good American painter, Massachusetts art, artist, Herman Dudley Murphy, mountain scene, New England, okay? He was a Massachusetts guy. He did a lot of paintings in New Hampshire also, but Herman Dudley Murphy. Another nice uh, American painting here, uh, Nicholas Alden Brooks, still life. I believe Mark told me he purchased this at a Christie's sale back in 1999. Nice example of Brooks Works. Here we have a couple of old master school paintings here. I believe they're on copper or tin after 10 years. A pair of those will be in the sale. Winter scene by Marshall, 1876. I've always been partial to these 19th century winter scene paintings by Marshall. Here's a special painting here. Well, this is a 19th century American school primitive. 
very, very well painted. It's unsigned, probably the second half of the 19th century. As you can see, it's a landscape. Um, Pennsylvania, New York, New England. Beautiful old farmhouse here with haystacks and a bridge. Details, incredible for a 19th century primitive. Condition is excellent. Charles Wysocki, California artist, actually. This subject is Maine. He did these contemporary folk art primitives. A couple pieces of folk art, one being this beautiful 19th century weather vane of Dexter with jockey. Good size, great patina, got remnants of the old gilt and a nice verdigris surface along the top edge. Nice weather vane. Over here is a Warren Kimball. And if Warren, you're out there, I'd like to say hi to you. I hope you're doing well. Warren, Vermont artist, contemporary folk art artist here. This is a great tavern sign of the cow and little red barn sign down here by Warren Kimball, Western Vermont artist. Well recognized American school primitive portrait. Very whimsical with this profile of a child holding the timepiece. I believe Mark told me he purchased this some 20 years ago at a Sotheby's or Christie's sale. Nice piece of American folk art. Here we have a Wimby Hoyt will that uh, Mark believes he bought in Woodstock here. This is a main boatyard scene. And notice what's in the central part of the painting there. A woody. Wimby Hoyt. Here we have a spectacular English uh, Regency convex mirror. Beautiful uh, gilded surface. This dates 1820. And what's exceptional about it, this is Walt, this is Leon, by the way, is the size of the mirror. Size. I don't think I've ever had one this big. 44 inches across. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, here in one of the guest bedrooms, we have a oil on canvas, 24 by 30, by Luis. Burion. It's a view of Mount Monadnock in autumn, as you can see the autumn colors. Sort of the. Well, we're out here on the porch. We have this 19th century American tavern sign. Possibly New Hampshire. It's the uh, Jenks Inn. Notice you've got this nice painted cornucopia sides. You've got the eagle eye up top. And original iron brackets. It is one-sided, but it's original paint. You can see the eagle and the background there, landscape and all. Nice sign. Nice original paint.